you know by now that ladybugs do not like mice. Now this trap is simple. All you need is a box. And I decided to get some clear plastic boxes with some snap-on lids uh, because then I can see the mice uh, when they're in there. And uh, it's fairly easy to work with and it's only a dollar each. I used some leftover galvanized steel from my uh, squirrel baffle. You can check out the video in the card above. And paper clip. You could use a cookie tin for the box or actually for the scrap metal. For scrap metal ideas, I decided to try to use an aluminum can. Didn't work out that well. The mice could actually chew through the can and the edges and pull it apart, which was not good for a trap. For thicker metals, a tin snips are a must and a 1 8 inch drill bit. Hot glue. You could use Gorilla Glue, but I chose to use aluminum rivets. Now really what you need to do is, what I like to do at least, is make some paper templates so I know uh, what I'm dealing with, what's going to fit, what's going to work. Um, so you need to have a little bit of origami experience, uh, that'll help. And uh, you just design your pattern and this is what I came up with. We have some side tabs that will fit against the trap and uh, just basically three walls. It'll go in the uh, mouse trap just like this. You'll cut out an opening for the uh, mouse to come in, and this will be the door. The door will be on a paper clip hinge, and it'll open and close just like that. Pretty simple design, and uh, you'll see how it works in a minute. Once uh, you have folded your origami, um, you will put it on the galvanized steel or whatever scrap metal you're using, and just pretty much trace it out. So that'll be the housing. There's little tabs on the right side for folding and folding on the left side as well. The door just has one little folding part where the hinge will be. Just to give sharper lines, I use a, a set of pliers to uh, do the folds. Test fitted, of course. Toughest part of the build, of course, is straightening out a paper clip. Once you wrestle with that paper clip and straighten it out, um, you'll place it on the uh, door, and this is where you're going to fold over the metal, over the um, paper clip. And you want to be able to keep it closed, so you use a set of pliers to really give it a bit of a hard edge, um, and so that locks in that paper clip into the hinge. And that's it. So uh, you have to drill a few 1 8 inch holes roughly um, through the sides, uh, slip the uh, door in, put uh, the paper clip through, bend it over, and that's how the mouse will go in. And there's a little fold at the top so the door cannot go over the top. Next cut a hole in the box. Be careful because this is thin plastic and it will crack. Now I decided to use rivets. I always wanted to use rivets and so I bought a rivet gun. It wasn't that expensive. It was like $15 plus these aluminum rivets uh, so it won't rust. And yeah, so I put this little extra plate in there as well um, because there's a bit of a gap from the door. Um, so that's to protect so the mouse can't, still can't go through. The rivets, they work really, really well actually. Um, and they're quite easy to put in. So as you can see, the mouse will go in that hole, uh, lift it up. The door is very light, so it'll just pass through. And when the door comes down, the mouse can't really get any purchase and pull up that door because it's standing on it, first of all. Uh, and that's the simple design, actually. Um, plastic lid goes on top, and you can see when the mouse is in, and that's about it. I did end up drilling some holes in the side in the finished product. I did drill some holes and I do suggest you drill some ventilation holes if you want that mouse to stay somewhat alive and a little bit more comfortable. Um, I d and the holes also allow the scent of the, uh, the cat snacks to get out a little bit better. Um, and why am I building them th this way? I want the mice to be alive, first of all. I can't check them for about, you know, say 8, 10, 12 hours after they're caught. 
Um, so I want them to be able to stay alive and I want to be able to uh, live release them elsewhere. And so I need a mouse trap that is very resistant to that. There are some ones out on the market that work well, but again, I'm a little bit cheap, so I'm trying to find the simplest and cheapest mouse trap that will do the job. Here's the version with the aluminum coat can, and it works the same. I riveted to, to the side of the uh, box, and this time I used a bit more hot glue instead as well. Um, now there's some bracing on top of the coat can just because the aluminum is so flimsy and it keeps it uh, a little more sturdy. It's all just connected by um, hot glue. And that's the bait, a little extra rib. This trap already failed once, I thought, eh, I'll put it out. It was successful. So the Coke can trap actually did work. It didn't work for one of the mice. Maybe it was a bigger mouse. This one's kind of a small one. Um, it was able to kind of bite through the side. I'll show it to you later. So you can see up there, there's a little bit of a thing on, where is it, right there, where I guess a bigger mouse or a different mouse kind of made some chew marks into the aluminum. And I guess that's how they squeeze themselves out. This mouse, on the other hand, has not been able to do that just yet. Not a full success, but a mini success. Easy to clean, nothing to corrode. The aluminum just sprays down, as well as the uh, galvanized steel. So cute. Look at this little tail. Mm. <laughs> what? What's that little pill? As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and watch those other videos that I have, Mousetrap 1 and 2. They'll be up in the top right-hand corner in one of those cards. Uh, and enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video.